This is how to make a supernova and today we're going to build a mortar tower. Ah! A few months ago a good friend of mine gave me Anno 1404 and I immediately was hooked to this game. Not only by the gameplay but also with the amazing style and architecture of all the buildings. I was playing Anno a few weeks ago and then my harbor got attacked by pirates. So I placed some defense towers around it so I could defend my harbor and I immediately fell in love with this building. This tower, the style of it, the architecture and I thought it would be very cool to have a tower inspired by the Anno tower on your tabletop while you're playing Warhammer, D&D or any other game. So let's go. I started this project with cutting some foam blocks and I used my hot wire cutter tool to do this. But you can also do this with a knife. This will be the stone part of the tower. Right now it's 14 by 8 centimeters. Um, on the bottom it will get an extra layer of foam. Uh, like uh, this. Before we can move on, we need to fix uh, these edges. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put this on the table. So when we cut here, we should have a nice corner so that this piece uh, lines up. We also need to do the same thing on the other side. I 3D printed this door and it will be somewhere around here, I guess. So I'm going to press it into the foam. And now I remove this part of foam so uh, later the door can be uh, placed here. Before we can glue anything in place, I want to add some uh, texture to all the foam. And for that, I'm going to use my aluminum foil ball. And all the parts that will be uh, visible, so not the inside, but the outside, I will give it some texture. The third part of the tower will be made out of wood, so I already made a base of cardboard, it's just a cardboard box. I painted the sides black in case you can see uh, in between uh, the planks. So right now I'm going to use some PVA glue and uh, glue some uh, coffee stirs in place. This will be the final part of our tower, uh, we're going to build some fortifications and before I'm going to put the floor on, um, I will paint it black. The floor is dry and now we can build uh, the wall of the top part and for that I'm going to use some 7cm uh, pieces and some 5cm pieces. But with the same stirs and some cut in half, I'm going to make these window shields. And I'm pretty sure that's not the official name. But they give the defender some protection in case of an attack. In Lord of the Rings, the two towers, you can also see them being used at Helm's Deep. So, note to self, I just cut away all the cardboard for the windows, uh, so when I would apply these window covers, uh, it would be cool that you could see uh, a little bit of the inside to give it a little bit more realism. 
Um, but I didn't think about it that the inside of this box is still uh, brown, just cardboard. So um, I'm going to take my airbrush and I'm going to try to paint the inside black. Um, and also going to paint uh, the cardboard here on the edges black. And then I'm going to use some super glue to place these covers uh, in place. But I think when I'm going to build this tower again, uh, for some reason or some similar projects, um, maybe I'm just going to leave the cardboard there. For the top hatch I already uh, made some smaller pieces of wood and I'm going to use some wood glue uh, to glue them on. Um, and when that's dry I'm going to make a frame around the top hatch. The next thing we need to do is to make some stairs. Um, I'm going to take some uh, foam and shape a rectangle about um, this size. Uh, then I'm going to mark where the door ends and uh, from that mark I'm going to cut it on a 45 uh, degree angle. And because all of my foam is two centimeters thick I'm going to use two parts of foam. This is the basic shape we have right now. Now we're going to make our uh, stairs. Um, I already made a zigzag pattern with a pencil here and we're going to cut it. Um, when you want, you can do this uh, with a knife uh, like this and then turn 90 degrees and like this and this and this and this and this and so on. Uh, but when you have a hard wire foam cutter, it will go a lot faster and a lot easier. Yeah, so pro tip, uh, when you want to record something, it really helps when you push the record button. So you can see uh, the actual process, but you can see the results with the hot wire foam cutter. So the stairs right now look like this. Um, it looks very good, but it's still very smooth. So I'm going to use my aluminum ball again to give the whole thing some texture. Um, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to glue it in place. On the sides of our uh, tower we have these very large flat areas and we have these foam seams. So to fix that um, I'm going to take uh, a few parts of foam, they're very thin, um, then I'm going to glue them here. So these flat parts will look more interesting and we also fix these foam seams. The last thing we need to do uh, before we can get to the painting um, is to get some ground texture on this uh, base. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some PVA glow all over and then I'm going to use some small stones and some uh, sand from my garden to give everything a nice texture. And if you like my video so far, please consider liking and subscribing because I have a lot more cool projects I want to share with you. Thanks. The sand is still drying, so I'm already going to work on the wooden part of the tower. Um, I'm going to use some hot glue to glue these pieces together and then I'm going to use uh, my homemade wash for uh, the first painting. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with the cutter in the end, so I'm going to start with a dark brown wash and then uh, work my way up from there. The first layer of uh, wash is still drying in here and there you have some uh, dry spots and the color over here is too bland for me. It's a little bit boring and I want um, a stronger, more interesting look. So I'm already going to um, add a second layer of uh, wash and this time it's a little bit darker and a little bit thicker. On my mini factory I found this amazing cannon made by Rack Taylor and if you want the STL I put the download link in the comment section below. 
After printing, I have primed it black and now I'm going to give it a dry brush with some gunmetal from Vallejo. This very cool model already looks like it can move up and down, but we also want to make it look like it can uh, turn 360 degrees. Um, and to achieve that effect, I'm going to use a very expensive, a very pro-painted uh, piece of cardboard. Uh, no, just seriously, I'm going to glue this in the middle of the tower, and then I'm going to glue uh, the cannon on top. And this uh, will sell the effect. And when the cannon was glued on the towel, I worked on the stone part again. All the walls got a black base coat and all the sand got a brown base coat. The next thing we need to do is to dry brush our whole project. First we're going to do uh, the walls and then we're going to do uh, the ground. Um, for the building I'm going to use a dark grey and with every pass I add more white into my mix. And I make sure I touch less of the model so you can see all the layers we uh, put on the model. Then uh, we're going to use uh, some dark brown and slowly add some yellow into our mix to dry brush the ground. In this case it's important to first paint the building and then paint the floor because uh, when we uh, accidentally put some gray color on the ground it won't be a problem because later we're going to uh, paint it brown anyway and um, when there is some brown later on the building it doesn't really matter because uh, it's possible that some ground or some dirt splattered up the building so that's what we're going to do Here you can clearly see the effect of the dry brushing. Uh, this side is dry brushed once with a dark gray and this is dry brushed uh, two times with a dark gray and a lighter gray. And already you can see all the details uh, we made with our aluminum foil ball. Um, and when we add another layer or maybe two more layers with even lighter colors of gray, uh, it will pop more and give you a more realistic and cool result. The door got a base coat of dead white from uh, Vallejo and when that was dry I added some wildwood contrast color. For the older metal parts I used uh, Vallejo's gun metal and to tone everything down I added some uh, Nurn Oil from Citadel. Then I applied some patches for uh, the static grass. When you want to add some grass or other vegetation, always keep in mind where people would be walking. Um, in my scenario, uh, I think in front of the stairs, a lot of people would be walking, so there's less vegetation because when there is some grass or bushes or anything else, it would be trampled immediately. So uh, nature has less chance to grow there. And when I was happy with it, I took my static grass applicator and added some static grass. And the last thing we need to do is to glue these pieces together. And for that, I'm going to use some hot glue. And then I'm going to add some little details to make it more alive. friends thank you for watching and if you want to see more cool projects I suggest you watch one of these videos see you next time